Hello everybody and welcome to Hollywood. I've come all the way over here to glorious downtown Los Angeles to celebrate the launch of East West Quantum Leap's latest library come brand spanking new player, Opus. Now, the East West studio is just around the corner and Doug and Nick are hanging out. We're gonna have a little cappuccino or something. No, I'm not, I'm not. The furthest I've been in the last six months is the supermarket. I'm standing in front of a green screen, obviously. But they have launched a new player, and this is quite important. Hello, boys. I'm definitely going to need a strong cup of tea. So here's the thing. East West are absolutely undeniably um, the main subscription sample library service in the world. Um, they have, I was going to say thousands of programs, but that's a, that's a terrible exaggeration. They, they provide a really, really good value um, at way of accessing uh, very high quality content and tons and tons of it. And they've been doing this for a while. Uh, you know, so you can get this for whatever, from $15 a month or something like that upwards. Now, the problem in the past has been that their sample player, the thing called the Play Engine, it, it was nobody's best friend. It was, it tended to be the kid you'd pick last for five-a-side football when it comes to sample players. So, great content, and you had to put up with the player. Now they've, East West have spent some time trying to rectify this, and they've now built this brand new engine from the scratch, from the ground up, called Opus, um, and it's got lots of really interesting bells and whistles. They actually bought in <laughs> not one guy called Wolfgang, but two uh, to um, help build this. Was that on the job description? <laughs> Excellent sample uh, software producing must be called Wolfgang. I th Hang on, what happens if Given there's two Wolfgangs, uh, if you send an email to uh, wolfgang at soundsonline.com. Hello. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Hello. Hi, Wolfgang. So which of the two Wolfgangs are you? Uh, uh, here we go. Best wishes. Wishes, Guy Mitchell Moore. Uh, okay. Send. We will find. <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Okay. So look, um, whichever Wolfgang that gets, you've both done a really, really, really good job um, uh, of th this. As well, I'll explain everything, I'll take you through it and all the rest of it when we look at some of the new libraries. There's one or two features which may be more controversial, so I'm not chucking away the sunglasses of doubt, I'm merely resting them on my forehead. Walking, talking, holding a camera and a cup of tea at once. I can do all of it. I need a third hand. <laughs> the shed. Right, let's get stuck in. Casting off famous sunglasses of doubt. Um, this is Opus. Um, so Opus is the new player and it comes with a number of new libraries, or not new libraries, but updates to existing libraries, which is quite significant. So what you get is down the left hand side are all the instruments you load, you get, this is the browse pane and you either can look at them by lab, libraries or database, then you've got a, uh, let's load something in. So one really cool feature is if you don't have um, a library installed on your system, and I haven't got Pop Brass for example installed on my system, it'll allow you to download those uh, libraries or just that individual sound so you don't have to download the whole thing and you don't have to keep tons of sounds lying around look if we double click it says do you want to download it you go yeah i'll download it and then it pops up there simple as that and then you can just go Ooh. 
and it's there straight away without any faffing that is really good because i mean with a with a set of libraries like this which i mean there are dozens and dozens and dozens of them as you can see you don't you know, I'm not going to use Fab 4 every day, but I quite like to have access to it when I, when, I, when I fancy it, okay? Anyway, so there's that. Then you get the player. Um, actually, let's load one of the more contemporary libraries. Let's load up Hollywood Strings. Where's, where's Strings gone? Come on, baby, you can do it. You, where are you, you cheeky string thing you are? Oh, there we go, that one, right. Oh, yes, yeah, so um, amongst the new libraries is this... Um, so you've got the pro preview here in the browser as well and the library's playing so let's just load up that one i'm going to go replace here we go replace and it'll load it in um so the yeah you're doing that yeah yes there we go and we're ready to go okay now play give there's tons of controls in here there are tons of controls and you can see these are the controllers down here uh, what is it? 1, 3, 11, 15, all kinds of different, which are assigned to different um, um, functions within the library so that if you've got a controller keyboard or something with little knobs on, you can assign those to those numbers and then it does it, you know, does its thing. Um, mic positions, obviously, all that kind of thing. Um, very nice built-in reverb. Mood is a new one. So you can go from... Uh, exactly how it works I'm not quite sure but you get the choice of soft classic or epic and it sort of just gives it a gloss of that kind of sound um, this is the new 18 um, string uh, 18 first violins uh, legato Very playable, very nice, sounds great. Uh, if we turn the reverb off, um, just see. That gives you an idea of the, of the sound of the room. It's a nice room. It's, a, it's not um, a great big sound studio like um, Air or Abbey Road or um, where else uh, Warner Brothers and places like that where you get more ambience from the room so it is a combination it, it's a very very good room for brass actually um, and the brass sounds really great in there it could arguably be said to be a bit you know on the small side for the strings but really by the time you added a bit of reverb in and the thing I've always used Hollywood strings for um, is those really big positive top lines which it's uh, really good for and this is I think better than uh, yeah significantly better than the um, old version I mean because the thing about okay come on get stay on track guys stay on track um, we'll talk about all this in a second let me just give you a quick uh, um, there's the mix window has got tons of stuff going on you've got um, uh, effects and you've got um, all kinds of sends and you've got um, all these different uh, mic positions. The mic positions are really powerful and you get all the mic positions. I mean, the vast majority of you are going to use this through uh, Composer Cloud, um, which is starts at $19 a month uh, if you're a normal person and $10 a month if you're a student. Mm. A student's normal people. <laughs> students are completely normal people. I should know I have 200 of them. Not personally, I mean, it's part of Think Space Education on their master's program. Uh, anyway, um, uh, so um, if you go for the uh, Composer Cloud Plus thing, wherever it is, here we go. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, so you get uh, Plus is $30 a month. Uh, X, which gives you two mic positions. So Cloud Plus gives you all the mic positions. Uh, X gives you two mic positions. And there's a super cheap one which is the same as the expensive one at the moment so it's not super cheap at all okay so 19 is the bottom one uh, on this and students and teachers uh, you can go you can sneak in for ten dollars a month which is super cheap i think you'd agree all these prices change all the time so okay yada 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 as they say now shall we dig into some of the uh really cool features of this library so the stuff they've added to <clears throat> is 
uh, they've added this new section, which is 18 violins, um, which uh, sounds great. Uh, what does the shorts sound like? I haven't shied the shorts yet. Let's go for staccatissimo times 18. Go for replace. Here we go. And it is loading up. Nice. Okay, we'll play more with this. I think I, I mean, I, I'm sort of getting drawn into its way. Um, they've done some work on um, Hollywood Brass, which I always thought was probably their best. Uh, um, here we go. Longs, Hollywood Brass. Let's go for you know, sus accent. Okay, yeah, whatever you say, mate. I'll I'll take a sus accent any day. Uh, so the the two trombones. I always judge um, trombones by their pianissimo. Yeah, that's that's not half bad. Uh, there's a new two trumpets. Uh, two trumpets expanded. Here we go. Uh, let's go for oh, this. Was one of my favourites. The sus mutes. Two trumpet sus meters. Really, really. It's I'd rather like that. Now, one of the biggest weaknesses, frankly, in the Hollywood lineup uh, in the past has been the woodwinds. Uh, it wasn't a particularly uh, enormous success, to be frank. Um, so they have done quite a lot of work on this uh, and they've added in a whole load of new um, patches, particularly ensemble patches. Three clarinets, non vib max, whatever you say. I'll take your word for it, okay. Let's try the legatos. Legatos were a weakness in the past. Um, and let's see how they stand up. Very nice, actually. Okay, look. Um, these new additions are very welcome. They're starting to fix some of the stuff which um, was problematic in the past. Um, that said, they're going to have to keep going because um, organisations like Orchestral Tools, Spitfire, um, um, who's the other lot who are... Oh, VSL, are doing lots of new libraries. Uh, so they've already got a huge uh, catalogue of libraries and they're producing new ones. They're, because Hollywood Strings was the first of the new generation um, libraries and string libraries. So now it is feeling slightly long in the tooth. So I'm really delighted to see that they're getting in there and starting to fresh, refresh the content and they need to keep going. Um, so to keep up with the um, the competition. Though frankly, of course, I suppose from one point of view, because they're the only subscription service on this scale, um, there ain't a lot of competition. Um, but this is a really good sounding um, library and the player just seems to work, you know, it's, it's much more intuitive. There is, okay, there is uh, a couple of things which I haven't mentioned yet, which I know some of you want to know about, and that is this thing called uh, the orchestrator. This is where I think... Uh, look, this is going to be controversial, so I'm putting the sunglasses down back on my forehead. There. Let me just show you what orchestrator is, and then you can all fume or not, or whatever. Some people will say, oh, what, 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 what are these people doing? Okay, okay. Suppose you wanted to write a piece of music. If we go, look, you've got, it loads up um, samples from the, uh, from these various uh, parts of the orchestra. And then you have a choice of ensembles, ostinatos, or score, or user. Let's look at score. How about 
Hollywood Fanfare, uh, Hollywood Adventure, uh, go for that one. Hollywood Adventure 4, double click, wait a second, and it loads a whole load of stuff in. There, it's done it. Now, all you have to do, you hold down a chord and... Yes, it works. <sighs> now I'm very conflict. I am very conflicted about this, as you can tell. So, obviously, if you knew almost nothing about music other than how to play a chord, you can now arrange in a traditional Hollywood sort of style. <sighs> it is an, uh, the the upside is for people who just come fresh to orchestral writing, you can get something which sounds really good really quickly. Um, the downside is. You know, if you can just do something like there's not that much satisfaction in it because it's almost like library music if you see what I mean so there is no composition involved you're just going so although these are presets they are also kind of they're you know they're they're, they're st styled to uh, sound like traditional um, you know a whole load of different um, Hollywood sounds and it's incredibly clever how it's done it and it does sound very very convincing but in a world with arguably too much music do we need this <laughs> so there's going to be people like me who write everything obviously from the ground up and enjoy the process and love having the control uh, but there's lots of you go kind of get Mm, that sounded pretty good to me. I'm going to do that and put my own tune on the top and I'm going to be very happy. Okay. Now, obviously, the very nature of this is it's going to sound quite traditional. And for anybody who needs to, you know, who has ambitions in this field, moving on and sounding different is obviously part of the thing. There's also potential problems with, if you're going to use this professionally, um, because of uh, clients tend to find it easier to work out if they've heard things before now for various reasons. And that could come back to bite you. Now, <clears throat> that's just using the scoring one. There are a lot of things going on here, which are like the ostinatos, uh, which are, uh, where we go? Okay, let's look at 16th note, 105, uh, 105 BPM notes accent ostinatos let's try this see what this sounds like you know this could save you quite a lot of time and the bit of this i quite like the most is probably um is the bit which you can design yourself you see that would be useful But I feel guilty. I feel guilty doing that. I do. Um, I have a feeling those of you who are really, really, really old um, will remember a thing called the uh, Roland D50, which had a particular patch on it called Digital Native Dance. And all you had to do was literally go boom, and it sounded, you know, great. And all of a sudden, you started hearing it. It's like some of those Omnisphere patches. You any Discovery Channel documentary, can, haven't I? Are we all? Have we met before? We certainly have. I think this might fall into that category. So this is a controversial edition. <laughs> oh. oh, how do I feel about this? Conflicted, because I can see the advantage. I can see why. Um, people coming new to this can get instant uh, satisfaction from just loading the thing up, holding down the cord, and off you go. Um, but you have a limited amount of control over what people are playing because somebody else has written it, and it is halfway in between you writing stuff and library music. So, uh, anyway, it's a. I have a feeling 
um, people who uh, get into this and learn how to program this so that you can do your own. So if, for example, you were working on a, a show or working on a film and there was a particular bum 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 or whatever, ostinato you used all the time, if you programmed that in, that would save you a lot of time. And it's yours because you programmed it. Unless you nicked it from somebody else. In which case it's not yours at all. What are you doing? Give it back, you copyright thief. Anyway, um, look, let's... I've been going quite a bit now. Um, I'm, I'm just going to lay into this and start writing some stuff. I'm not going to use Orchestrator. I'm going to use the normal one. So we're going to start... OK, look, look. We're just going to write a simple little piece of music and see how we get on. And we'll discover things about this. So uh, if, if this is your kind of thing, then feel free to subscribe. And also underneath this little video, there's sort of free giveaway type stuff and you can sign up, end up on the email list and you get even more information and cool stuff. So don't forget to do that and tinkle the little bell. Did I say all that? Yeah. OK, right. Good. Okay. Right. Here we go. Um, Hollywood Strings. Uh, I'm going to dive into the old violas. I'm a big fan of violas. Where are they? There they are. Shorts. And I am re relentlessly going to do it myself. I am not going to use Orchestrator. But you can see how I oh, replace all. There we go. Yeah, there we go. You know, it it, do, it it would save quite a lot of time if I just said, oh, just load up one of those ostinato things and have done with it. Um, but it's a slippery slope, and then and you, then you're not really writing your own music quite so much anymore. It's a bit more too much automation. Right, let me get some uh, mic positions up. We haven't played with the mixer yet. What have we got? Let's get these closes in. How do I turn them on? How do I turn them on? I've forgotten. Oh, that one. There we go. That's better. I like that. Oh. Okay. Uh, Let's uh, do, 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 What a spirited start to a intriguing film. I actually had an inquiry for writing an animated feature today. I need to get on with that. Dun, 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 dun. What am I going to put with this? Okay, it skips. Okay, so I'm just going to go for the two bars. It's fine. And then tidy it up. Okay. It'd be so good if I could play nice and accurately. Then it would just... You wouldn't have to sit around watching me do this kind of faff. Is it a faff? Okay, right. Um, let's um, add to this... What are we going to add to this? We're going to add some... Um, we're going to add some basses and some celli. So we're going to use the multi version of this. We're going to Celli Replay. We're going to go to the shorts. We're now going to go for Staccatissimo and now add. And this will put it on a second MIDI track. So we add a second MIDI track, one of these, which we're going to call Chell. And we're going to stick it there. And that will then. Now, depending on whether I've got my ears in the right way around, that sounds like it's on the wrong side, but that's because my things wired up the wrong way around so don't worry Chelly. today you're on the left yay what's it like over there boys and girls oh you prefer being on the other side oh well it's fine don't worry it won't last long right here we go Now let's have a bass. Uh, I'm doing the. I'm going to build the 
build the strings first, then we're going to add some percussion, then we're going to add some brass and some woodwind because woodwind is a big thing with this. So we're going to go, um, we're going to go full section. Yeah, I've got to go full section. Yeah, go on, push it out, mate, push it out. And then basses, yeah, shorts. That's right, add that in. Right. Add another little MIDI channel to a nice little MIDI channel. Oh, where does this alter ego of mine come from? This sort of weird kind of... Whoa, yeah. <laughs> uh. That's what I'll do. There you go, I've decided. Actually, I don't need to redo it. Uh, Sometimes, okay, is it quicker to redo it? Yes, it is actually. I'm going to go ba 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 That'll do. I haven't got all day. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Play 10 bars? No, I am lazy. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to put another opus in. Uh, what are we going to put in this one? Uh, should we do this woodwind thing? Are you up for some woodwinds? Um, or are we going to put some percussion in next? Um, uh, oh, two mines. Okay, let's let's whack a bit of percussion in. Tell you what, let's try one of these combo kits. I don't know what goes on in the combo kit either, but we'll find out in about two seconds. Okay, one. Sounds all right. Um, we're going to go another track. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to add a MIDI track and call it bass drum because it's a combo kit. I can just, I'm changing the MIDI channel back to one. So both these tracks are going into the same MIDI, you see, but I'm putting the other part on the um, second track. So they're separate. Actually, I only need one on the downbeat. Two is too quick. That'll do. I'm bored already. And um, the reason, the lower the instrument, the slower it moves. And those little double hits were sounding a bit muddy. Okay, we'll leave that for the time being. We'll move on to going back to my woodwinds, which is where I was going next. Um, still called woodwinds, so we're going to call it Timp, because that's what that one was. And this one is woodwind. Hello, woodwind. Hello, guy. Um, let us... Can I interest you in some uh, clarinets? Yes, you can, actually. Um, how many have you got? Oh, three, actually. Oh. Yeah, yeah, go on then. Give me give me some... What am I, what am I looking at? Longs? Long's non vib. How about that? Let's start with some of those and see how that goes. Oh, it's an excellent choice, actually, sir. Oh, thank you. It's never a good sign when I'm talking to my samples. Or is it? Oh, my keyboard's reset. My keyboard's reset. I haven't got my little things where I thought I was does this sometimes I can't quite re remember why but um, normally I've got them all pre-programmed there so I can just go and it stopped doing that so now I'm gonna to have to load up the thing and make it do it again okay here we go um, I haven't yet I have yet to work out what I'm gonna do with these clarinets let's just see what happens Okay, 
okay mm. that's that answers that question um what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to go for some legatos uh, uh slur max slur max <laughs> slur max sounds like the name is a bad villain in a cheap horror film slur max be careful okay then we'll layer this uh, people take the piss out of me because they say layer rather than layer Let's go with that. Okay, that'll do. It's not that interesting as a piece of music. It's sort of uh, now. Let's try adding to this. Go MIDI flutes. We're going to have some flutes in here. We're going to have some flute fun. Flute-tastic. Okay. Three flutes as you're into... Uh, how about shorts? Staccato double tonguey. Okay, if you insist. Okay, second track. Okay, let's go down to the flutes. So... Okay, let me just quickly work out if I'm going. That might work. Yeah, that worked. Okay, now let's have um, some... Um... Okay, come on, come on, guy. Don't get... To, don't lose the will. Um, we're going to put some brass in now because the brass is pretty good. And it's got, you know, it's, all these libraries have this big Hollywood sound to them. Um, and like all top end libraries, you could do top, really good professional work with any of this or any of uh, Spitfire or orchestral tools or any of the others. Um, VSL, it just, you know, what one rings your bell, um, so to speak. And if, okay, let's go for... Oh yeah, let's go. Let's do these. Uh, what have they got by way of? Okay, so two trombone sus max. Okay, add. And I'm also going to have some shorts uh, because double tonguing. Add. So we've got two. We've got uh, so we've got some trombones uh, doing some uh, longs and some trombones doing some shorts. Shall we have some French horns in there as well? Because I, there we go, six. Let's see what the legato's are. Uh, slur run, slur accent max. Uh, okay, I'll go with that. Many of the time and off have I used these French horns. Um, they lend themselves very well to sort of the big superhero y type thing. Um, okay, let's add two of these in. So the first, okay, so I've just got a brass for the moment. And the first one's going to be the short trombones, and the second one's going to be the horns. So this is the trombone sus.
okay. Now I'm going to add with the shorts a little triplet in, triple tongue. Okay, now horns. I'm going to wait until bar seven for the horns. Um, and do we need on the top of this? Uh, a little bit of some violins yeah we probably do it's uh as <laughs> no it would be churlish as the nice people at sounds online at east west have gone to all this trouble of recording these new strings that we don't use them so i'm going to uh 18 violins legato uh what have i got port light max slur like okay i'm going to try that one because i can Thank you, Wolfgang. You've done a good job. You're welcome, Guy. Do you know? I don't know. Um, violin 18. Yeah, this is a very easy piece of software to use. It's far, far more intuitive than it was last time. And it doesn't do anything weird. <laughs> playing here have the multi view then you can see everything here we go are you ready <laughs> so um, I'm going to declare this done. Look, conclusions. Um, yeah, m massive upgrade. I mean, the bells and whistles and the orchestrator and the, you know, and all the other, and the extra libraries are great. But just the usability and the playability of the whole thing is really just, it just makes it so much easier to use than it was in the past. It's more intuitive. It's laid out better. It's got some really clever extra bits. And I haven't touched on the fact that you can have customizable key switches using triggers. And there's also, you can set it up. Things like Purge were a weakness of play. It didn't what, The Purge is where you can stream stuff all from the uh, SSD without loading it into memory, which is really good. This is now much more sophisticated and it can adapt it to either coming off a normal hard drive or a normal SSD or a super fast PCIe um, SSD and things like that. So there's, this is definitely the player which will allow them to move forward. And it's as good as any of the others out there at the moment. Um, so um, if you are a Composer Cloud person and you're already subscribed, no brainer, obviously, just download it. Um, and it can even save your disk space. Um, if you've always been holding off Composer Cloud because you didn't like play, give it another look because I think this does change things quite a lot. And, you know, these new uh, additions to the library are fantastic. Uh, you know, it's dead easy to write with and, uh, you know, I'm enjoying it. Thank you very much. Thank you, East West, for the uh, Composer Cloud license, which um, is very good of you. Bear in mind, team, at home, we have done a little kind of short free course on how to use uh, East West Composer Cloud. Um, but of course it's done with the play version. So it's I'll have to go through and update all that. Oh well, never mind. So look, what's not to like? Good stuff. Um, hope you've enjoyed this and I will, uh, what do I normally say at the end of things? I, I know what I say at the beginning. I say, hello everybody. But what do I say at the end? <laughs>
Oh, I remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, because we do lives and all kinds of interesting things, and remind you to download stuff. And then I say goodbye. That's it. You're still there? Oh, okay. Bye.